Hi, I'm Sara Mortara, and I'm here to talk about tools for biodiversity data cleaning. This presentation was brought up by myself and Andrea Sanchez Tapia. We are both postdoctoral researchers at the Botanical Garden in Rio de Janeiro. We work in the team of Marina Siqueira. She's the head of the Scientific Computation Lab at our institution. And we work with biodiversity informatics, ecological niche models, open science and reproducibility in ecology and biodiversity. We are concerned about building scientific workflows in R for data downloading, cleaning, species modeling, and also to understand general patterns of biodiversity. In this course, we are here today to talk about data cleaning. We will also come back to talk about Modeler, which is the platform in R to perform, to build scientific workflows for ecological niche models, and also to talk about how to quantify uncertainty in ecological niche models. Today, we'll be talking about the principles of biodiversity data and the principles of data cleaning, and also we'll make an exercise of building a workflow of data cleaning, and we'll see a few or several tools available to do that. Um, starting with the principles of biodiversity data, it's really important to keep in mind that data is the basis and we add layers and connections to data to build knowledge, theory and wisdom. Although this is not a linear process and data is the foundation and knowledge adds value to initial data and data is a huge uh, portion of this process and not only is the basis to do knowledge but also with knowledge we are making new inputs to our data. In terms of biodiversity data, uh, when we think of biodiversity data, we, uh, we usually think of data of a species in a particular time and, and place, and those data are stored in museums and herbaria, and <clears throat> those data are in these collections, and these collections store the data in, in, in databases. And in this era, we have a lot of access to free and open biodiversity databases, such as GBIF, iNaturalist, VertNet. iNaturalist is a database built through citizen science. VertNet is for vertebrates. Uh, BIEN is the Botanical and Ecology Networks, and there are other severals. We have, by the end of the class, a few links of these databases. Those are all links, and you can check them later. Uh, when we think about the biodiversity data, <coughs> we are thinking about records of species on, splay, on, on, on space, and those records also have a timestamp. And for instance, these are uh, data for legume plant species from Fabacia family, and those are um, terrestrial plants and should occur in the continent or islands. And Data from GB, for instance, is very diverse. This is the good data that we have. But we also have data that falls in the ocean, and those are terrestrial plants. They should not be in the ocean. And we also have data that have zeros as, as latitude and longitude, and we can see this pattern in the data. So we have a huge variety of, in the quality of this data that are available. <laughs> And when we are thinking about biodiversity data, uh, we need to, to make clear that it has three components. We have species and we have the localities and we have the species occurrence data that combine those two things in, in which we will have information of a particular species in a particular longitude and latitude. And those data, <coughs> uh, we can see those data from GB, for instance, and here we have uh, the same legume data that we saw in the map. Those are only the first records, and we can see that we have different variety of in, in resolution. We can have species data without coordinates. We have data at family level with coordinates. We have different species with or without coordinates. 
this is the it, this is how we see the data, but this is not how how the data is stored. And in order to take into account those different facets of the data, species, localities, specimens, um, the community came up with a biodiversity data standard, which is Darwin Core. You can check the website here. And the goal of the of of, of this initiative is to facilitate the sharing of information about biological diversity through a pattern in which we have different uh, spreadsheets um, of, and those are always um, text files that are related to each other through an ID. So we, ha you ha we have the specimens, for instance, the vernacular names and the references, and those are different components of the same data. And all of these components, they build the, the Darwin Core Archive. It's a type of file that uh, comprises different data that are related to each other through IDs. This is the idea of a relational database, and we will talk about a little bit about this later. So this is about the data, and now we'll talk about what are the principles of biodiversity data cleaning now that we are a bit more uh, aware of what is the biodiversity data that we are talking about. So we are talking about records of species on, on space and time, and we have a huge variety of the in the quality of this data. And what is really important here is to know the limits of our knowledge. So informed ignorance is a powerful research tool. And this is a statement uh, made by Joaquin Hortal in his work uh, about these shortfalls and gaps in the knowledge of, of biodiversity. And their point here is that uh, they, they, are, they are trying to, to organize what are, what are the different gaps that we have in biodiversity, for instance, related to species names, species distributions, and so on. But the point here is that we have to be aware of the limits of our data, the limits of our knowledge, and what we can build with what we have. And in this sense, data cleaning is super important. So errors exist and ignorance exist. So what we need, what we can do, we need to detect the errors, we need to validate the data, either if we have good data or bad data, and we need to perform data cleaning when we need. And this process is, uh, is part of the quality control and the improvement of quality in the data. So when we clean data, we are improving the input of our own data. And this is a process that we do not only when we are dealing with huge databases or data that we did not collect it, but even when we collect our data, we have to be careful about all of these errors that can exist in our own data as well. So what are the errors? So we, we have to keep in mind that we are dealing with a whole range of data, and most of the data uh, is, are collected uh, for a particular um, uh, for, with a particular goal, and it, it's not that we have uh, sampled the entire world or entire region systematically, so we will have gaps and bias in our data, if, even if we are talking about museum or observational data. In terms of museum data, uh, the type of errors that we have is that usually we have a lot of historical data that, that are super important to the build of knowledge, but usually we have those data without any coordinates or locality information. We can have inaccurate coordinates, for instance, for instance, the coordinate of a municipality or county or even a state, province or country. Uh, we can have data that uh, with coordinates that was attributed by someone that did not collect the data. And even though this is a super common thing to do when we do that, and we should try to um, put coordinates when we can, but this, can add, this should be done with, um, uh, this should be a, a super careful process because it can add more error to the data. When we are talking about observational data, 
usually we have um, more precise information about the locality because people are actually in the field and at, at a particular moment and we have more precise information about time and place. But when we are talking about inventories or studies at the community level, we have higher variance in the quality of taxonomic and nomenclature information, um, even when we have experts, because we can have a lot of rare species and <clears throat> that are hard to identify. So we have a higher variance in the quality of, of this data. But what those two data have in common is that usually we have nothing about absences. So when we are performing ecological niche models, we are the input of the data is both presence and absence of the species. And most of the time we do not, we do not have real absences. So we use statistical tools to generate pseudo absences for the species. This is a common procedure, but when we have the information about, about the absence, this is super useful. But we usually don't have, and this is another bias of our data, because we have the data of where the species are, but we do not have the data where the species aren't. One thing that is important is that we are talking about correcting errors, but one thing that we should be really concerned in this whole process of generating data and knowledge is that prevention is prefer preferable to later correction. And we can rely on uh, tools to facilitate this process. So one important tool is the automatic georeferencing process using databases that are available. We'll talk a little bit about this in the end of this class. I'll give you some examples of that. There are tools to check automatic spelling uh, of species name and even trying to and, and, and even checking the species identification using digital imaging when we have that. And using databases really uh, formal databases really helps uh, minimizing errors so we can uh, limit what are the uh, for instance the the extent of the coordinates that we can add to a database <clears throat> or even the species and, and we can using databases we can make take more control of the data that we are putting on and also <clears throat> what is really important is to work uh, with the idea of relational database philosophy which is the philosophy behind the Darwin core uh, standard uh, type of file in which we have different spreadsheets and we deal with localities and species and coordinates clean, cleaning separately and then we bind all of them together again using IDs. So this idea, even uh, if, if, if we are dealing with um, not a formal database, only different spreadsheets, if we are thinking about a relational database philosophy, we can improve a lot uh, and minimize the errors in the process of getting the data and in data cleaning as well. So what are the types of errors? We will be talking here about spatial and taxonomic errors mostly. And uh, spatial error is the wrong or inaccurate coordinates. And it can occur when we, we have misidentification, if we don't have the right identification of species, we have, uh, for definition, um, a misplaced coordinate because it's not even that species. Uh, we can have imprecise coordinates, and this is super important to take into account. If sometimes we have municipalities or states or provinces or country, country coordinates, and those are really imprecise, and, and usually we can't, can't do much with, with those coordinates. Um, it's super common to have missing information inserted as, which is what we saw when in our legume uh, maps, we saw latitude and lo longitude information inserted as zeros. 
we also can have um, inverted coordinates or coordinates inserted with the wrong signal. And those are the types of, of, of special errors. When we are talking about taxonomic and nomenclature, nomenclatural errors, we are talking about wrong or misspelled names. And this is due to inaccurate identification, either if, if we have some sort of uh, uncertainty in the in, in identification or I'm missing the identification when you think it's, it's a species A, but it's actually a species B. And also when we do not attempt to um, the, the well, species um, biodiversity data is not stable, so it changes, the definition of species changes through time. So if we are not updating the most correct name or definition for a particular species or group, we are adding error. So we always have to check the the valid name for a species or for all the species that we are working. And another type of error is when we are merging databases. And usually when I when we are using data from GB, for instance, we are merging different databases. And when we are doing that, we we are we are binding different data that can come from, for instance, different taxonomic concepts. <clears throat> And this is the case, for instance, when different collections are adopting different the deli limitations of a particular ta taxa, and sometimes um, they use a particular name, and, and in other cases, in, in other collection, they they will adopt a different definition for that species, and, and therefore a different name. So we have to keep that that can occur. Uh, we can have different assumptions or units of measurement. So we can have different precisions in the coordinates, for instance, and we have to make sure that we are binding um, coordinates that are in the same unit. When, you are mer when we are merging databases, it's easy to identify errors. So it's an important uh, step to identify errors in the data but it also creates new errors because we can be binding things that are different when they are not or the opposite. And uh, we have to really be concerned about the differences in duplicated data and duplicates. When we are talking about duplicated data, is the case that in a particular locality, there were two independent uh, expeditions that r recorded a particular species. In the case of a duplicates, is when we are talking about the exact same specimen, the same individual being sampled. So for instance, for plants, when we are sampling a plant, we are collecting different samples of the same individual, and those samples can be sent to different collections. And that is a du duplicate. And when we are merging databases, we, we have to make sure that the difference of a duplicated uh, record that is the in, that comes from an, an independent service or an actual duplicate that is the exact the exactly same um, collection of data in the same individual. This is super important because sometimes we are interested in having duplicated data. Sometimes we are we want to ignore all of that. And depending on what we are doing, this is super, super important. And this is still a huge challenge in data cleaning. And what are the implications of data cleaning for ecological niche models? So we have a large availability availability of biodiversity data on public databases, and we are all using that. Um, however, they have errors and biases. And their errors come from the nature of the data that we are using, species occurrence data that can have errors in the special position or in the identification. And this will be super important. Um, I mean, the data that we are using as input is what we use to build a model of a species. And we have to make sure that the definition of a species and its area are correct. 
and just 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 obviously have uh, implies in the quality of the models that we are generating. And another thing that we have to keep in mind is that depending on what we are doing and the re the resolution that we are analyzing the data when we we are, we are performing ecological niche models, we are combining data that comes from uh, the species occurrence data and the predictor variables, and the quality of the coordinate must match the quality, the resolution that we are using in the predictor variables. If we don't have this match, we are doing bad or wrong models. So we know that data cleaning proves the performance of ecological niche models, and this was already ex explored for several authors. So data cleaning should be part of the basic toolkit and, and that's why we are here talking about data cleaning because we know that it, that it affects the performance of the models. And in this case, uh, we have to think that we are not doing data cleaning for a group that we have no idea how it should uh, behave. So Data cleaning is not only uh, an autom automatic process. We also have to evaluate um, the cleaning based on the knowledge that we have uh, of the system that we are working on. This is super important. So what is the definition of data cleaning? It's the process of determin determining inaccurate, incomplete, or unreasonable data for format check, completeness checks. We have to make sure that we have at least that we are at least close to the complete distribution of a species. We never know that, but we have to at least believe that we are close enough. Uh, data must be reasonable either in terms of the identification and in terms of the localities. We have to check the limits. It has to make sense with what we know about the uh, biogeography of the species. And we have to check for outliers anything that is abnormal in terms of geographical, temporal, or environmental va values for a species. And the process of data cleaning results in flagging. So when we see something that it's not reasonable, it, it might be an error, we do not change that manually. We will flag that data, we, we will add a red flag, this is not good. And then we will try to generate new data to fill that data that is not correct. And we never modify the original data. So. In the process, we start with the raw data and we end up with the clean data and the clean data also is just a modif it, it, it is it contains the original data. We never are actually modifying it. So in this process, we start with the raw data here. We end up with the clean data and it, in order to go through this whole process is we start with data checking and error detection and then we validate the data either if the data are correct or not, and then we put a red flag on that, and then everything that is under this classification, we have to correct. And then we end up with the clean data that also will contain the raw data. So what are the principles? We add corrections to the, the, the original database. We retain original data in separate fields. We never modify them. We document all steps. This is super important. And it doesn't matter if we are using an automated routine or um, a more manual routine. We always have to document our steps and decisions in order to this process of data cleaning be reproducible. So when we are talking about the whole processes of getting data and using data and all the training and, and education involved in that, we start with the collector and we end up with the users. And data cleaning is central to this process. So data editing, validation, and cleaning is super important. And we are not only getting data that we will clean. So the sources of the data are not only what the collector made, but also comes from um, what we validated and cleaned. So this is another uh, source of, this is another data entry here that comes from the data cleaning. 
So this is all that we um, have to know to start thinking about data cleaning and what are the concepts and, and principles. So let's now make an exercise of thinking uh, how we would build a workflow of data cleaning. So we have to start with the raw data and end with the clean data, and we have to pass through all these steps. And usually, uh, as everything that we can automatize, we should. And there are several tools to do that. We will we'll do an exercise in R. And, but using R does not guarantee that the workflow will be reproducible, so we have to document every step. And how do we create a workflow? First of all, we do not start any work without knowing our goals and hypotheses. So we have to start from that and then we will get the data to answer our, 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 our main question. And we, we can and we should use the tools available to make the workflow as much as automatic as we can. We should be documenting and automatizing all steps as much as we can. And if we do not do, not do that, at least we should document every, every step. So let's make an exercise now using the data of this species. This is a tree species, Alicitidacea, from the Neotropics, uh, Cariniana legalis. And we have here the occurrence data. This is raw data from GBIF. We have uh, a lot of data in South America. We have a few data in the Atlantic and the Pacific Sea. And we also have some data in the East Coast, is this part of the United States. So, so let's go to the exercise here. This is all available for you. Uh, so let's go to the exercise now. This is all available for you. So this is a basic workflow for biodiversity data cleaning using R. And um, we have here a uh, text that is much easier to read. And I will follow this text and the code here. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with R, you can download the R program here. We highly recommend all of you to use an editor to work with uh, coding. And R Studio is, is very good and, and very um, easy to learn. Um, we will need four packages to do this exercise. Um, RGB, Taxon Stand, Coordinate Cleaner, and Maps. If you do not have those packages installed, you can use this command to install the packages. Here, we already have them, so we start loading the packages. I will run this chunk of code here. And we are using the data from our species Cariniana legalis, from Lecetidacea family. And we have here um, species... Um, we will use here the function awk search from RGB to get the data from GBIF. And we are just saving the species name in an object called species. And we are using this object. We are giving this object to this function awk search. And we are saving the output in an object called aux. So let's run this code. And it takes a while because we are actually making a query to the uh, GBIF database. You have to have internet. And now we end up with 500 uh, records for this species. Uh, if we, we check the call names of this object, you see uh, a standard here, this, is, this follows uh, the Darwin core standard. So all those names follow the Darwin core standard. St standard. So if we consult uh, the Darwin core standard, we, we can understand everything that we have here. Uh, we will be working with the scientific name, decimal latitude, decimal longitude, and a few other columns that we will show later. The first step of our workflow is to save the raw data in a directory. So I'm here. This is my folder structure. I will be just creating a new folder called data. It is here now. And then I will use a function to write this object that is inside R uh, to our computer. And 
under the name of raw data. So I'll be writing this file. And now if I open my data folder, I will see here the raw data that I'm saving. If we are thinking about a workflow and a workflow that can be uh, reproducible, it is super important not only to document our decisions here that we are doing in our code and with our comments, but also saving um, the outputs of every huge step of our cleaning. So let's start checking species taxonomy. Uh, we have here, uh, here are the names that we have for the species. We have Cariniana brasiliensis, Cariana legalis, which are the name that we want, and Coratari legalis. Uh, the good thing here is that uh, we have three different uh, names for the same species. We have two synonyms, uh, and we know that because uh, GBEEF has a column, uh, taxonomic status, and it will tell us uh, if the name is accepted or it's a, if it is a synonym. From, fr from our 500 data, we have 491 accepted uh, records with accepted name, and we have nine records um, with names that are synonyms. And GB already makes a, a check for us, but we will double check. We will connect to the plant list database using the package taxon stand. We will use the function TPL to do that, and we will check the names. So first, we will save all the three names that we have under an object, and I will run this chunk of code. And then I'm making here a query of from uh, from the the plant list with the names that we have. So if we see this object here, we have the original name under the column of taxon, we have the genus, and what this function does, the species here, and what this function does is that it adds new variables here, for instance, new genus, which is the correct genus for that name, new species, the correct epithet for that name. And, and the correct uh, author of the species and everything always that ha has an ID. This is very useful when we are uh, working with a lot of data. But right now what we need is that we need to save all of this information, the new genus, the new species and the taxonomic status into an object so we can bind uh, these corrections to the original data. So first we will create an object with the original name, uh, which is the query that we made, now what we gave to the query, which is the species names, and then we will create new columns, so genus new from TPL, species new from TPL, status from TPL, and the scientific name new from TPL. So we are creating a new object here. If we check this object, it has everything that we asked for. And now we are merging our raw data that is named ox with this new object. Because here we have three lines. We want to merge all the information that we have under the scientific name of these three categories with this correction. So we will not do this by hand. This is done using this function that is super useful, merge. And in order to merge different things, we have to have a column, um, common column. The column, common column here is the scientific name. So we are merging our raw data with our corrected data by scientific name. That's what we are doing here. I'll run this chunk of code and then we are always exporting the cleaning that we have been do doing. So we will do here, uh, again, we will write a different, a new file with the clean uh, taxonomic check. This is now here. Let's go back to our viewer. So we already um, check it for species taxonomy. Let's go to the third step in our workflow, which is checking species coordinates. So here, we have uh, all the records in, in our database. So we are plotting our uh, entire data. So this is what we have or original or originally. And 
Here we will use the function clean coordinates from the coordinate cleaner package to clean the species records. To do that, first we have, if we check here uh, our original data ox, we can see that we have in the column uh, of uh, decimal latitude and decimal longitude, we have a lot of information assigned as not available. And we cannot clean what is not available, so we will remove those lines. So this uh, line here is just to remove everything that is not available in the column of latitude or longitude. So we run this chunk of code. Our original data had um, 500 data. And we are checking the dimensions now. Oops. I mistype it here. Uh, we have 184 uh, data that have um, numeric coordinates here. So we will clean this data uh, using the function clean coordinates. Now we can use it and we give the object uh, that holds our coordinates. We have to say to the function what is the col column with longitude values, the column with latitude values, the columns with species values. And this here is to specify the output that we want. Here I'm asking only for the cleaned uh, data. So we will run this code and we are connecting to a database with uh, special data and it will check for uh, precision of the coordinates. So we will eliminate everything that is the center of the country or um, the state or the municipality, everything that um, is in the sea, everything that is, uh, sometimes we have coordinates from the institutions. So a collect from the inside of the collection or inside of the museum. And, and this is everything that we want to get rid because this is not good information. And so we end up our cleaning. Let's see how many clean data we have. The geo clean, we have 147. We had before 184. So this is really good, actually. We are losing just a few records. We had 500, but we do not have coordinates for, from all of that. So we had uh, a huge diminish here when we cleaned uh, the not available information. So let's see uh, how the cleaning is. So you can follow the code here. And here is the plot of the raw data here on the left. And here is the clean data. So we see um, that we have a much more reasonable uh, distribution for this species. Those here were outliers or maybe on precise uh, coordinates. This may, might be the centroid of the country. It's super common to have data here, but those records are very unlikely to be from this species based on the cleaning, so they are out. So we have basically a distribution across the Atlantic coast of Brazil. Uh, with this output here, we uh, value clean. We are only asking to return the clean data. I'm changing here to special valid because I want to return um, all the data that is in the input of my aux card uh, so we can <coughs> save this. Okay, and now if I check the dimension of my ox new gel, uh, this is 184, which matches um, the not the original data, but the data without the not available information. And now to so the last step of our workflow is to again export our data. Uh, and here, let's remember that we clean, we excluded all the data that were not available. And now we have to bind again our clean uh, 
geographic data with the original data. So that's what we are doing because we have the dimension of our object ox is 500. The dimension of the object that is the clean data is 184. And we want to have add new columns to our original data with the ge geographical cleaning. So that's we, what we are doing here. We are merging the raw data with the cleaned uh, geographical data. Here we are just uh, forcing the function to return everything that has in the aux, uh, in the original data. Otherwise, uh, it won't work. And we are using here the common in order to merge things. We need common columns. The col the common column here is the key. This is the GBIF key for each record. Every database has uh, an ID and it's super important to have an ID for each record and this is super useful and this is uh, why we are, we are able to merge the clean data with the uh, raw data by using this key. So this is super important, so we are merging. And then we are exporting this data, so we are saving again. So if we go here to the folder that we have the data, we end up our workflow with the raw data, the taxonomic check, and the coordinate check. And it's important to remember that this is a workflow and we try to make everything automatic as much as we can. And it doesn't, uh, doesn't mean that this does not require that we check again. So next step would be check if everything makes sense uh, in the light of uh, the system that we are working with. So this is our exercise. It will be available for you. I just want to finish this, uh, this talk talking about our tools and other tools outside our that will help us for data cleaning. There are several, several packages available. Those are the list of pack uh, packages. Here we have all the links for the uh, pack for the pages of the packages. So those are all packages for data download. So we can download data from GB. We oops, we can download from BIEN and several other databases. This is a super important pack, super cool package, Oxite. Uh, it not only makes uh, queries to databases, but also uh, keeps track of the origin of the data for reproducibility pr purposes. So this is super useful. Uh, those are the packages for taxonomic cleaning. There are several packages here. We use the taxon stand. This is for plant species. For uh, Brazil, we have a specific package. Uh, and we have several species for uh, particular groups and general um, <coughs> packages as well. We have a few packages here for geographic cleaning. Um, Coordinate Cleaner is the one that we used. We have other packages, uh, even niche toolbox package that performs ecological niche modeling has its own version for data, its own functions for data cleaning. And uh, this package here, no BR, uh, it's a bit different from the from the cleaning, but I I I wanted to put here because <coughs> it. It is more related to the gaps in, in the data. So it's, it's very interesting to see, to discriminating well-served special units from um, data that we have available. Uh, those are tools uh, not in R, but those are useful to, tools to help us to give coordinates when we don't have. So we have BioGeomancer, Geoloc, that is from CREA. Here we also have all the links. Geolocate, those are just to name a few. There are others, but they are uh, online tools in which you can uh, type a locality and it will give a suggestion of the coordinates that you can incorporate. Uh, this is super useful, but we have uh, almost no uh, automatic way of doing that in, uh, that is not uh, typing the names of the localities. So I will finish with the frontiers in biodiversity data cleaning. So we talked about uh, cleaning uh, data, but 
and flagging data, but it's really important to be able to quantify how much of uncertainty we have in this clean data and how much uncertainty we have in the identifications of the species. For instance, if we have a specimen that was identified by a specialist or a specimen that was identified just by a regular person. And those are different qualities of identifications. And we um, one in interesting venue is to understand what are the implications of those, those uncertainties in uh, in the models. Uh, we still do not have very um, robust routines for the recognition, recognition of the duplicates, duplicate, duplicates the same exact individual at the same place and time. And also uh, automatized routines for attributing coordinates to localities. We have those tools that I just showed you. Uh, the names, but uh, they are in, in none of the R packages that we show. Uh, there is this, and this is something that our group is working on. We are working on um, some of those uh, frontiers, and we are we are we hope to soon uh, be able to share the code that we are producing to do those um, automatizing attributing of coordinates to localities and also um, quantify the uncertainty in the identification. Um, so we end up with our take home messages that we have a wide variety of data sources and errors and it's important to know them. It is important to keep track of the data sources that we are using. It's important to make our, our data cleaning workflows reproducible. This is a very important, nice paper um, discussing reproducibility in ecological niche mod models specifically. The link is also here. And the Oxide package that is a very useful tool to keep track of the different sorts of data. Um, a careful inspection is essential not only to the good results, but to good insights. And we have to um, make sure that the inspection is done uh, thinking about the system that we are working. So we have to use our biological knowledge of the things in this process of data cleaning. We never modify our original data. We add flags to the data and we clean. We try to correct those flags. And we need to get acquainted with the most common errors and produce routines to deal with them. And uh, in terms of ecological niche modeling, it's all super important to match uh, the occurrence equality to the question that we have and to the variables that we are using. And we have several tools available. We do not have to build another tool. We have to go beyond, try to integrate those tools, and to build um, reproducible workflows using everything that we have available and build uh, what we do not have. So thank you very much. <laughs>